uh, Eamon O'Brien is my name, and I, my first interest in China began as a young primary school student when I delivered the magazine of the Columban Fathers called uh, The Far East. On the front of it there was a Chinese junk and it was nothing like a boat I'd ever seen uh, and it fascinated me and I always thought I'd love to be somewhere in the sea in this junk with all its masts and the size of it which was much larger than any boat I'd ever seen. Another thing that introduced me to China was I read a book, I can't remember when, but probably when I was maybe 12, 13, called The Inn of the Seventh Happiness. And that was a fascinating book, particularly about the women of China and the binding of their feet. And I simply couldn't comprehend how anybody could do something like that to anybody else. But also the bit there that struck me was the missionary, who was a Protestant missionary, um, did such great work for Chinese people in need. Then, of course, I joined the Columban Fathers and there was very little about China in the, in the conversations at that time. We did hear from Columban missionaries who had come back after being expelled from China and we heard of the stories about the Chinese and the food they ate and the culture so different and of course the, 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 the persecution they suffered. So that also was there. But the thing that really spun it into orbit for me was uh, in 1979 I was travelling to Japan on Pakistan International Airlines, a cheap airlines. And it stopped in, La in, um, uh, not in Lahore, I think, and uh, it was on its way to Tokyo. And then it was also stopping in Beijing. And as I left the travel agency in, uh, in Piccadilly Circus, I passed the Chinese embassy, went in, and within two days I had a visa, because this was the time when China was opening up. So I spent about 12 days in China in September 1979, and it was just unbelievable. Everything was fascinating. Everything was interesting, everything was new, and most of it was incomprehensible because I didn't understand a word on any of the screens. I didn't understand a word of what was being said, and it struck me there was so much that I could learn here. But I was struck by the enormous welcome of people I met on the street. I was probably one of the first foreigners there that time, and everybody wanted to talk to me and say hello to me. And I had particularly good times in student venues. Now, I can't remember, was I at universities or not? But the, the, we, we gathered and we were talking. And they were talking about everything in the outside world. And all I wanted to talk about was the, the, the great wall, uh, the, the, the poster wall they had, where all the new ideas about China were coming out. And all they wanted to talk about was the Western world. So we had a great deal of engagement. I hired a bicycle, went around Beijing uh, with many thousands of people on bicycles and at that time then the churches were beginning to open and the temples were beginning to open and I visited any church that was open and any temple that was open and it was a fascinating experience.